Hey Turtle Squad, welcome to another furry film review. I'm your host, Kame the Turtle, and I review movies that feature furries in the main cast. Today's movie I'm reviewing is the My Little Pony movie. What you talking about? I need to be more precise with this one, because there's been a few My Little Pony movies out there, and the one I'm reviewing is the My Little Pony Friendship is Match movie from 2017. Produced by All Spark Animation and released through Lionsgate. Before we dive into the review, there's an announcement I have to make at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Alright, now that announcement out of the way, I think I need to get changed. One moment. Okay, let us dive into the synopsis of the movie. This movie takes place between season 7 and 8. How do I know this for a fact? It's because in episode 1, season 8, they make direct references to the movie. So nice to have a definitive answer point on if the movie is canon or not. Princess Twilight Sparkle and her friends are getting ready to host a festival of friendship, with the headliners being none other than the three other princesses of Equestria, but also the famous songstress Songbird Serenade. While they're busy getting set up, their party is party crashed by Tempest Shadow, a unicorn with a broken horn who is acting as the representative of the Storm King. Who wants to conquer all of Equestria? Tempest quickly proves how terrifying of a force the Storm King's army is, catching in the three major princesses, but failing to catch Twilight Sparkle and her friends. As Twilight and her friends are escaping, she hears Princess Celestia say, Go get help from the Queen of the Hippo. So Twilight and her friends go to a town on the outskirts of Equestria, where we see many races we do not see anywhere else in the series. In this town, they meet a feline smooth talking rogue named Capper, who agrees to help them find the Queen of the Hippo and lets them hide out in his house in the meantime, all the while planning actually to betray them so he can pay out somebody he owes a lot of money to. While hiding out at his house, Rarity fixes up his outfit in an act of generosity which is something he's not used to at this point in his life, and Twilight finds a clue that they're not actually supposed to find help from the Queen of the Hippos, but the Queen of the Hippo Griffs. Tempest finds our pony heroes and have them run away aboard an airship that is actually manned by an ex-band of pirates led by Captain Seleno. There, they discover that the former pirates are now delivery boys and girls of the Storm King, though they're mostly merchandise. Rainbow Dash convinces the former pirate to go back to being their formerly awesome selves, and in exchange for being inspired, they agree to take the ponies to Mount Ares, the home of the Hippogriffs. But on the way there, they are ambushed by Tempest Shadow. The ponies manage to escape once again, and in a fit of rage, Tempest destroys the ship. At Mount Ares, the ponies discover that the Hippogriffs have vanished, or so they would have you believe. In reality, they used a magical artifact to transform themselves into sea ponies. Yet they became sea horses and established a new kingdom of Sequestria. While learning this tidbit out, they befriend the princess of the Hippogriffs, Skystar. Well, more precisely, Pinkie Pie befriends her, and Twilight tells her friends to go out and play with Skystar while she has something else to do. It is revealed that she's actually trying to steal the magical artifact so that she can have the ponies transform into something able to fight the Storm King's forces. This does not go to plan at all, and the ponies are perceived to be kicked out of Sequestria. When Twilight's friends confront her about this, they have a fight and Twilight splits from the group, giving Tempest the perfect chance to capture Twilight and take her back to the capital of Canterlot. The remaining of the main six finds out that Twilight has been captured, and all the friends they made throughout the movie shows up to help them rescue her. The band of misfits proceed to sneak into Canterlot and attempt to rescue Twilight from the Storm King, who drains the power of all four princes into a magical relic that allows him to control Storm. As the friends are reaching the castle's gate to rescue Twilight, Tempest asks the Storm King to restore her horn as he promised, only for the Storm King to betray her. The friends rush the Storm King, knocking the relic from his hand. At the same time, this causes Tempest to fall off the edge of the balcony, hanging on by a hook. Twilight has a choice to rescue Tempest or grab the relic. She makes a choice to rescue Tempest, and the Storm King gets the relic again. 
With help of her friends, she pushes the Storm King away and proceeds to grab the relic and banishing the storm. As the ponies are celebrating their victory, the Storm King comes back for one last attack on Twilight. Tempest jumps in front of the attack meant for Twilight and saves her while simultaneously defeating the Storm King once and for all. The ponies and their newfound friends, including Tempest, restore Canterlot and have the festival go on as planned. The movie ends and everyone has a happily ever after, with the exception of Storm King. Alright, I need to get changed back into my normal form. Wait, this is not my normal form. Alright, back to normal. Alright, now for the review bit. I'm feeling just based on story, characters, and art. At the core of this movie, it is a friendship movie about having your friend help you and try not to take too much on by yourself. We see time and time again throughout the movie, Twilight's taking on too much responsibility on herself, not actively trusting her friend to help her. Case in point, in the sequestrian bit, she did not trust her friends to be able to convince Princess Skystar and an extension, her mother, the Queen of Hippogriffs, to give them the artifact. So she tried to steal it herself. In reality, if she trusted her friends, they might very well have gotten the help of the hippogriffs. The story-wise, while predictable, I would have to say the story was brilliant. Characters. The main six ponies are fairly similar to how they act in the series itself. With maybe a few exceptions here and there. Case in point is Spike the Dragon. He's far more sarcastic in his role in the movie for the series, but he doesn't really have much of his role throughout the movie other than being a to the point. The other new characters we meet throughout the movie, well, the major ones anyway, they got Capper the Cat, Captain Seleno, Pirate, Tempest, the Rogue Unicorn, Princess Skystar, the Hippogriff, and the Storm King. Capper is moves talking. He knows how to get people to do what he wants. The Pirate, Captain Seleno, is brave and able to inspire a loyalty in her crew and in others. Maybe that's why she hit it off so well with Rainbow Dash, who has the element of loyal Princess Skystar and a friendly ball of energy, who just has no chance to really make new friends that often. Tempest is a fun counterpoint to the main pony, where they're typically fun-loving and joyful to be around. She is relatively dour and more interested in getting what she wants out of life, no matter what or who gets in her way. The Storm King is both comical and menacing at the same time. Jumping from humorous dialogue to bouts of rage is a difficult balance to pull off. So I want to say the character aspect of the movie is brilliant. And then there's the arc of the movie. This scene was beautifully shaded. Art of the characters shown then out from their normal points in the series. So if you see artwork done from the movie versus the series, you can typically pick up which is which, allowing it to be a standout among the My Little Pony the artwork of the time. Backgrounds were detailed, actions flowed mm -hmm. smoothly, so overall I want to say this movie art-wise was brilliant. Overall, I find the movie itself to be brilliant. If you agree or disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. And if you have a different movie you think I should review that features animals or animal-like characters in the main cast, tell me in the comments with hashtag filmreview. Alright, now for that announcement I had. Now for that announcement I made at the beginning of the video. I recently got up to 200 subscribers, so I'm gearing up for another q and If you have a question for me and would like to see me answer it in the video, let me know in the comments below with hashtag q and I would love to hear from you. If you guys want to see my last for a film review, you can see it in the card above, in the description below. And if you want to just watch another one of my videos in general, my last video will be pinned in the comments below. That being said, if you like what you saw and want more, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell for notifications when my next video airs. Leave a like, maybe a comment, share this with friends, family, other furry friends you might know, and I hope to see you all next time. Johnny!